guys, welcome back to my channel. I really hope the lighting's okay. We're losing daylight rapidly. Um, the weather's just so shit at the moment that it's so hard to find time to film around like work and school and all these things. But anyway, I'm here today to do CJ's book cover book tag. Um, I don't know if it comes across on my channel, but I am a bit of a like design geek. Like I worked in interior design. I love aesthetics, furniture, font, all that kind of thing. So, um, I really love this tag and I would actually like CJ to do a best of version as well because there's a lot of book covers I love. So question one is, say it don't spray it, what is your cover with the most offensive use of type? Okay, I made a paper list because we're going old fashioned here. Um, one of my first ones is um, British by Afwa Hirsch. I love this book. It's like one of the number one non-fiction books I recommend to someone if they want to read about race relations in the UK. But there's a lot of things that I'm offended by, like just how this whole thing, how this works and there's all this typeface underneath with the quotes. I hate that. I hate how this is shiny, but I also hate how large and blocky the text of Brit and then it has the ish in the brackets. I think it's really gimmicky. I know it's not for me. I don't really like bold font like that unless it's going to be like really plain. I feel like there's too many colours with it in dark and the yellow and the light blue. I'm pretty offended by that. My next one is Weirdly Polar Vortex, which I haven't read yet, but my friend Kieran wanted me to read. And the reason why I'm most offended by this is just because I think the font is way too small for the book cover. Like, I really feel like the title needs to be the most important part. And I feel like it's just, it's too spaced out in between the letters and it should be taking up more space. And yeah, I don't know, that is, it really jars me for some reason that it's that small. I feel like they should have put the letters close together and then spread out the text overall. Got a problem with that. And then this one's probably the most offensive and it's a book I bought recently and I haven't read yet and that's Devoured. And it has this children's like scribble font on it and I am absolutely not here for that. It's so scratchy as well as my number one pet peeve with book covers is when they're shiny like this, so not into that one bit and then it's copied again on the side so even though I'm excited to read about that 1970s cult I don't don't need that font with it okay question number two is <laughs> she's serving Reese's book club the book cover that gives you the most commercial book club energy I went for books I've read because I feel like that's more relevant but one of my favorite books which I feel like is so hard done by in the literary fiction circles because of the paperback cover and it's a place for us this is the cover of the paperback. This is the cover of the hardback. Love the hardback cover. I like big bold graphics. Um, but this picture with the f specifically the fireworks in the background are so ugly. The green fade into purple. No, just there's so much wrong with this. And it's literally like looks like top shelf Tesco supermarket book that you buy to take on holiday. I'm so offended by it and it's such a shame because this book is beautiful and a very interesting exploration of the Indian American experiences and um, growing up Muslim in America and I just, I love this book, but why would you do that? My pet peeve is when they change from the hardback to the paperback to something completely different and it's worse. Like, surely it was cheaper just to print the hardback cover onto the paperback. You tell me, but um, I hate when they use the photo, when they, they use a photo anyway and then the fireworks, that killed me off. The other one which I feel like gives out really big, um, ow, I hurt my finger, book club, um, like commercial energy is The Girls by Emma Klein. I think it's, it's the sunset vibe that I'm not into. I think my cover's also like quite bleached because it was in my window for ages. So maybe it looks even more insane. I hate the way the font is in this corner and it's like quite, it's quite like, I don't know, like Cosmopolitan magazine font, do you know what I mean? Um, and I, yeah, I just hate the placement of the font in particular. And then I hate the sunset situation. I feel like it's big Reese's Book Club energy. You can see the stamp right there, um, which is a shame. And then the third one, which is like a literary big hitter, which I, I think put me off her books for so long. And I've only actually read one of them and I didn't really care about it. And that's Anne Tyler's book. They all have, you can see here, like a very formulaic, um, layout which is similar i know um alex from what pages you're on he talked about alice munro's books and i feel like it's that similar vibe and i'm just kind of like gals get with the program get into 2021 get your covers updated <laughs> like they're still printing the same covers they designed in the 90s again hate the block font 
hate the use of the picture and yeah I'm just not I'm not into it. I'd like really have to be particular about if I like photo imagery and it's very rare like I like the Rachel Cuss covers I like an object photo I like this Raven Smith cover with the pickle but on the whole I much prefer a graphic cover to a picture cover and these Ann Tyler pictures are so pointless like it's just nothing isn't it Okay, number three, speaking of nothing, is yes, girl, give us nothing. I was thinking about filming this and putting on CJ's accent when I did the um, questions, but I didn't want to get cancelled, so I didn't. But this is covers with seemingly no energy put into them. Okay, hear me out on this one. This is Roxanne Gay. Roxanne Gay's covers are so pointless. This one for Hunger, I'm sorry, is a stock Im image of a fork with then like some aerial font on it or helvetica is it helvetica is it times new roman you tell me the name of this font but i'm sorry this image is a stock image of a fork with her writing over the front and i hate it and it's such a shame because what a gorgeous piece of work i feel like roxanne gay is another one like stuck in her literary bubble some she needs a new cover design artist and they need to pick her up because she uses this font on all of her covers her cover of difficult women is hideous the black and pink, like, I'm sorry, are we living in 2005, Tammy Girl? And then the heart, no, no, no. And do you know what? I love her books. I hate posting that on Bookstagram because I hate the covers. But I think Hunger is particularly offensive with the picture of the fork. Like, we get it. It's a book about food. That's um, big, I don't care energy. Um, another one which I feel like is this, I think it's interesting to consider US um, UK covers. So the UK cover of Emma Klein's Daddy, I really like. I think the girl's really hot. I like the font. I like the use of colour with the framing. It's like a Polaroid. But the um, American cover, what? Like you're giving me nothing, literally nothing. It's just blue and yellow. Like, I don't know. I find that really interesting to consider the different um, markets. And like most of the time I prefer US covers, but for Daddy... I way prefer this one, and, but weirdly, I think the girls have the same cover worldwide, so make it make sense to me. But yeah, dad, the daddy cover is really boring. Another one in that same vein is um, Melissa Broder's So Sad Today. This is the UK cover, which I like. I like the like speckly and um, like Terezo tile vibe I'm getting from it, and I like the cutout font. And for an essay collection, like it's quirky, I like it. But the um, USA cover, again, black and pink, offensive combination. Secondly, does nothing for me. Like, the font's so boring and it's a weird placement of the font in the bottom corner. Don't like that. Just no vibes at all and zero effort could have made that on paint. Um, so that's why that's another US, UK one I prefer. Okay, number four is a face only a mother could love. A cover so hideous but a book so good you keep it around. This is um, a tricky one. I also don't have the book to show you, but I promise I still own it. And that's Leila Slimani's covers. She's another awful user of stock images. Like this girl with the hair and then the font. Like, no, 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 no. But her books are so good. And I feel like that her covers also make her look really commercial when she's actually like a cool French Moroccan translated writer and like should be getting a bigger rep, but her covers look like sounded commercial fiction which is interesting because her new non-fiction here sex and lies has a really cool cover and it's beautifully produced it's like one of those matte finishes with the french flaps i feel like that's 10 out of 10 and we need to reprint her fiction with this kind of vibe because i feel like she would sell more books because i feel like when i lend adele to people they're like what is this and i'm like no it's a really interesting exploration of female desire and sexuality in paris but it just looks like, I don't know, like a basic murder mystery to me. Not a fan, not a fan at all. Okay, question number five. Take one thing off before leaving a house, a cover that needs less elements. Okay, I'm really playing on this USA, UK cover thing, but I hate the cover of the UK pizza girl. Also, we don't really care that much about the book, but like, again, the pink and the black, it's just not me. It's, it shouldn't, shouldn't be allowed. We, need, we needed to have left that in you know, the 2000s, but the USA cover I love, and I literally was, like, prepared to spend more money on it, oh no, my light's twitching, I don't know if you guys had a flicker of the light in the background, I'm sorry, it's getting so dark, um, 
the USA cover of Pizza Girl. I really love, but I feel like it's one, I love the neon and I love the off-white background, but I feel like it's one step too far to have the fade in the font color as well. I feel like the font should have been a block color and then it would have been a little less. But I love the neon and I, I do like this cover in general, but that's just a little extra I needed. Okay, and then number six, the last question is, Hype Beast, a cover going for all trends at once. This one I found quite hard because I don't like hate a lot of the cover trends at the moment. Like I know a lot of people take issue with like a vanishing half and those um, sort of like graphic swirly whirly covers. I'm, I don't mind those. I'm fine with that. Um, but this cover of The Ash Family by Molly Dakota, I haven't read this, but I want to. It's one of my cult books I'm interested in. I feel like it's, it's trying to do too much at once with this, the sunset background tree thing. It's reminding me of The Prophets, which I'm sure you've seen everywhere at the moment. That has like a very land, like these like block color landscapes are very in. And then also the font being this like handwritten sort of like painted font at the same time. And then also slanting towards the mountain. I don't know, I just feel like it's trying to do too many things at once. And I also think it should have picked blue or orange which is why the prophets cover is quite successful because it's like all in one shade although have you guys seen the australian one because that's pink crazy but um i feel like this would have been way more successful if it didn't try and do both color trends and also the font and the angle at the same time but that's just me um hope you guys enjoyed this video it was quite random i really want to do like a us uk book cover comparison let me know if you're fellow design geeks out there would be interested in that and i'm gonna tag some people in the description bar um down below because i think like quite a few of my friends have done this already but if anyone is interested in this please do it because i would love to see you guys's bookish cover opinions and thank you so much for watching and i'll be back next week with a video bye